Hello ladies, so here we are. We are on day seven of this 40 day sugar fast and um, this chapter is called A Holy Hunger and it starts with Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. Um, and she starts with reminding us that no amount of sugar has ever been able to satisfy your hunger. Sugar's temporary pleasure is short-lived, fleeting. Think about it. Even when you've just had a slice of key lime pie on a hot summer's day or a serving of apple cobbler in celebration of fall's bounty, don't you often hunger for more? I know I do. No matter the season, as I'm scraping food off of dinner plates and wrapping up leftovers to stick in the fridge, somehow I always end up eating just one more bite. I had to go through this 40-day sugar fast three times that's 120 days without sugar before I began to understand my problem. My issue isn't actually with sugar or with food, but with hunger. Misplaced, insatiable hunger. And so this chapter is all about um, finding the only one who can satisfy. Jesus the, is the only one who can satisfy our hunger in this fleshly body, in this world, in this life, we're always going to hunger. Um, our flesh will always crave more um, of things that make it feel good. And But the only thing that um, we should be hungering for like that is Jesus because he can actually just fulfill every desire and uh, do us nothing but good. And never any harm. So, <laughs> um, later on in the chapter, it says, When we change our minds about what we're most hungry for, when we finally begin to hunger for his righteousness, our eating habits start to change, as do our lives. That's when we begin to be transformed. Um, then skipping down a bit, she says, It is my hope that you don't simply read a few verses and pray a few prayers and drop a few pounds during these 40 days. If that's all you do, then the pounds will likely come right back, along with your insatiable appetite. Instead, I pray that you discover a different sort of hunger, a holy, a holy hunger that leads to a satisfied life. Um, and that's, you know, when I started the group Surrendered Vessels, that's my heart for this too, is um, not so much even about this, but to lay all these things aside, to be filled with Jesus and to walk fully in our callings for the Lord so that we can live that full, satisfying life that he's called us to. Um, and she goes on to go into Matthew 5, 6 again, and just to encourages us to say that as a prayer. So Lord, help me to hunger and thirst for your righteousness more than anything else. And just make that a prayer during this time. Lord, help me to hunger and thirst for your righteousness more than anything else. Amen. So, and then um, the last part here says, my fasting friend, You've got to change your mind about what it is you're most hungry for today. It's been seven days since you started your sugar fast, and you are likely still experiencing some pretty intense cravings. Allow each one to bring you to your knees. Ask God to help you exchange your sweet tooth with a new hunger for the satisfying sweetness of Christ. When you hunger most for him, it will change your life. Your hunger for sugar will decrease and your hunger for him will increase. This holy hunger will transform more than your diet. It will transform your life. Um, it just reminded me too of, I listened to a Daniel Colinda message like a week ago and he was saying um, to just think about what it is you've been most desiring and where's your desire been at and like, if it's not Jesus, first and foremost, then you're off. Just check your desires. So, um, just think on that. And if you're desiring more food and things or anything above Christ, then just get on your knees, repent, and say, Jesus, I hunger and thirst for you. You are the only thing 
that satisfies. Nothing, nothing in this world could, could ever satisfy. And we need more of you. All right. So be blessed today. Take care. Bye.